All right, let's dive into chronic kidney disease. When I say chronic this time, I'm referring to something that the patient's either been having for the last six months or so, or something the patient may have for the rest of their lives. Uh, when I say kidney disease, what I'm saying is the kidney as an organ itself is not functioning at 100%. So uh, what would cause it to go into chronic kidney disease? Well, there's some risk factors, uh, hypertension, um, so the kidney has a lot of very small um, capillaries, and so when you have high blood pressure, it can cause damage to those. Uh, when I say capillaries, the kidney has glomeruli. So lots of high blood pressure, it can cause those to, to just become damaged and not be able to uh, have them work 100%. Diabetes, also, I told you there's this very small, almost like capillaries, and so if they uh, have very thick, sugary blood and the, and the damage, uh, that, that it can cause, like diabetes can cause. Nephrotoxic medications, uh, NSAIDs or antibiotics, or the patient just went and drank a bunch of radiator fluid, it can cause them to go into chronic kidney disease. Damage them to the point that there's no return. Infection, um, such as um, glomerular nephritis, uh, could cause the kidneys to become damaged uh, within the kidney itself to where there's no coming back. Um, if you have renal stenosis, which um, that refers to the artery going directly to the kidney, if it becomes narrow and it's not saved in time, um, it can just cause uh, the kidneys to have ischemic damage, just like a heart has a heart attack, ischemic damage, has no return, same thing with the kidney. So prevention would be to make sure you take your blood pressure medications as you're supposed to, to check your blood pressures regularly. For diabetes, to watch your blood sugar levels and uh, try to make sure you have a good A1C. For nephrotoxic medications, be to uh, make sure you do peaks and troughs with uh, antibiotics such as vancomycin or gentamicin, uh, and to um, maybe talk to your doctor about which medicines you should take, not just take a bunch of NSAIDs for pain, and maybe talk to your doctor. In fact, we make sure you take your antibiotics to the complete extent of the um, prescribed um, treatment regimen. For stenosis, it would be prevention would be well. I mean. If you're having problems, go see your doctor and maybe they can find it before it's too bad. Signs and symptoms of chronic kidney disease. I'm not going to be referring to end stage renal disease. That'll be in my next video, so keep an eye out for that. I'm just going to talk about the first four stages. Um, you got a patient come in and they say they have a history of chronic kidney disease. What do you expect? Patient may have fluid overload. So the kidneys, uh, they're supposed to monitor how much fluid is in the blood. If they're not working 100%, they may be retaining fluid. And so you may have a patient with some edema. Um, may lead to hypertension, uh, increased cardiac uh, work, so maybe the heart's going to get tired, maybe it'll come in with some um, cardiac ischemia because it's working too hard. Their labs are going to be off, so you're going to see increased waste product in the blood, increased this of say creatinine or BUN can be found in the labs. Also their electrolytes are off. So the kidney, one of its major uh, functions is the electrolytes of potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus. So these all may become elevated. When those are elevated, you might see uh, dysrhythmias. You know, the heart may be running VTAC, VFib, because it has uh, hyperkalemia. They may be weak because their electrolytes are off. They may be having tremors because their electrolytes are off. The kidneys are also uh, play a role in telling the body to produce red blood cells. So they produce erythropoietin. Well, when they're kit damaged, they're not able to produce it effectively. The patient may be a chronic uh, anemic patient. Okay. Also, you may see uremia. This is one of those wastes when you have too much ur uh, uric acid. Uh, you, the patient may have itchy skin, so they come in, they're very itchy, and they may have also little crystals on their skin when they sweat called uremic frost. So, what can we do as nurses? Well, we're going to have to take care of each of these one at a time. For anemia, we may be giving iron supplements to help the body produce red blood cells, or air nest injections, which are given to tell the body, hey, produce red blood cells. If they have fluid overload, you want to restrict how much fluid they have in their diet and give them diuretics. If their electrolytes are off you, and they have, you want to make sure you give them a diet that is low in potassium, low in phosphorus, low in magnesium, so those don't become too elevated. And so they don't hold on too much fluid. Also restrict their salts because water follows salts. And then you just want to make sure you do the follow-up stuff with if they have any dysrhythmias, weakness, tremors. Now I'm going to talk about end renal disease in its own video, so uh, look forward to that one next.